Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, special guest Brent Riley. We're here in Oceanside, California at the garage. This is the U.S. headquarters for, for JS, right? Yeah, yeah. So home base here for JS the USA. Uh, one of the, the three JS garages we have um, alongside Bali and in Kira. Sick. So thanks for being on the show. Had a great time surfing with you yeah, this morning, getting fun, a few fun. waves. My uh, beach break game's a little suspect at the moment, but I had a great time being out there. Um, today's episode, we're going into the JS Black Baron 2.1. Yeah. Yep, so it's, uh, it's one of the newest uh, twinnies we have available in the JS line. Uh, take off the original Black Baron and some fine tuning and different uh, aspects to the original. And um, yeah, stoked to tell you guys a little more about it. So for me, the Black Baron, the original Black Baron, which I think that was JS's first twin fin yep. in the lineup. Yep. Um, it kind of had like a blunt, wider nose outline, super fun board. It was a favorite of mine, had a great time on that board. And um, this 2.1 has a center box. It's a little bit more of a performance outline. So you guys kind of just took it like a whole different direction. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how that came about? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Jason wanted to kind of keep that DNA uh, and he has, uh, I think, a lot more so in the, in the front of the board. So, um, you know, front half up um, and obviously stretch it out a little bit um, for what the original Black Baron was. And so, yeah, you're right. Like it's, it's kind of somewhere in between like a small wave groveling performance shortboard yeah. and a real, real high performance 20. Yeah. Um, and, and that kind of, you know, it does allow you to, you know, play around with you know, different components and fins and different feels. And, um, and I think it's, it's kind of part of the fun of the board and, you know, something that, you know, allows the rider to kind of discover uh, kind of what works for them in different conditions and kind of keeps things fresh. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for, you know, and when, when looking at a new board. Absolutely. Like for me personally, who I am as a surfer, this kind of fits who I am. Yeah. When you talk about board category, that small wave performance board slash daily driver for guys that love twenties or a twin plus uh, one trailer feel where you can actually get the tail to be a little kind of free. Totally. Um, that's how it felt for me. And we pushed it at Waco Surf in the pool. I was riding a stock 5.5. Five, and I think that's what you were riding today. Yeah, yeah. So the 25.8 liter 5.5, uh, five, that's what I was on um, in the Hi-Fi construction. So that's our EPS tech we have at JS. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, you know, on the smaller end of the scale or, or, you know, if you are in a wave pool, you need that little bit of extra f float um, you know, on a gutless day, or if you're in fresh water, sure. The hi-fi really suits that really well. Sure. And I was riding my pivot twin plus trailer. That one I have, you gave me was future box. Yep. And I went one stock size smaller just cause I feel like I'm not competing with anybody out in the ocean for a wave. I know the wave, I can catch the wave. And then I want that board to be a little bit shorter to fit in that tight, you know, kind of sucking pockety pockety section. Yep. And it didn't disappoint. One of the things I really liked about um, the 2.1 was when I was going for like a front side carve and then I was coming out of that at the pool, I could go right into a bottom turn, right back into a top turn with no hesitation from turn to turn. And I felt like it was really about the rail design. Like it's kind of a tapered rail where it's engaged and it, it's sharp and it feels a little bit more high performance feel to it yeah definitely like the transition surfing i think um you know maybe is what you classify that as you know linking turns together yeah i think that's what this board does really well and i i think a lot of that thinking that jason had in developing this board and model was was you know snapper rocks right it's yeah. a real lined up wave it's it's a drawn out wave so you can kind of um create different lines and and have time to think about what you want to do sure and i think you know, we don't, I mean, obviously don't have snapper rocks in uh, most of our backyards. So um, playing around with the different fin components, like this morning, you know, I had a, an upright fin, the MRs with no trailer. And that's just to kind of loosen it up and, and kind of create a little bit more uh, upright turns and a little slide to it. And just to, just to kind of, you know, switch it up from a board that would maybe have a little more hold with a, a rear trailer in there in yeah. that instance, or a power twin, which just has more area than a, an MR fan does. Sure. Um, or even 
a thruster, which, you know, people have been playing around with it. I know it wasn't designed to be written as a, a thruster, but, um, you know, there has been a lot of, uh, you know, our team writer has been using that, Oliver Kurtz, mm -hmm. uh, just released some clips late, recently using it as a thruster and it looked like a high performance short board. So. Sure. so I talk about the pool being top to bottom like a beach break, kind of has that punchy feel. And I felt like it was getting top to bottom real quick. The board had great flow, excellent rail engagement. I kind of feel like the Hi-Fi did have that little extra pop that I like at the pool. And then going to the beach break, I was riding the stock 5.6 coming in at 26.9 liters, I think. Yep. And I was riding the Mick Fanning Twin Plus trailer because this is as the FCS2 box. Right. And I felt that felt pretty good too. Yep. And I feel like, you know, me personally at the beach breaks, my popping up and getting to my feet and getting that first little pump can be a little bit difficult at times. Yep. But um, I felt like the board was engaged. The rail felt good. The fin setup I chose really felt good. And like I could push off it. Yep. So all in all, I felt like it's a pretty versatile board. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the bottom contours? We talked about the rail being a little bit tapered. So yeah. tell me about the... Yeah, so, so it does have um, some characteristics that you'd find in you know, a high performance shortboard given that it is single to double. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a reverse concave, meaning that the interior right here, corner, sort of in the center of the board, is that actually gonna be the deepest part of the, um, the concave? And then it does kind of shallow out as you go to nose and tail. Mm. What the strength of the JS is and, and, and the hi-fi construction that we have is it, it probably feels closest to a PU construction in the sense that it deadens any sort of vibration. It, mm. it, it doesn't really get too chattery if, yeah, it, if it's yeah. a bit of wind too yeah. as well. Um, so I think it's the closest thing to what a PU is gonna feel like in this EPS construction. So they've done a really good job playing around with the different uh, foam densities, uh, you know, glassing specs. And, and what they've done in the 2.0 uh, with this last year's update is it, they've widened the carbon bit on the deck. Mm -hmm. It used to go nose to tail for the Hi-Fi 1.0. So what the 2.0 has done is they widen this a bit. It doesn't go nose to tail. It just basically centered here in the in the top half of the board. Mm. Um, and then it's just gonna basically create a bit of more torsion. So mm. a little more feedback for the user mm. um, and a little bit more spring. It's gonna keep that longevity of that, uh, of that spring back just a bit longer. Um, and you'll see that vector netting kind of uh, wrapping around the rail. That used to be on the bottom set half of the board, um, but now just on that, that top half. Um, and not all the way to the to nose, um, but all the way down to the tail. So for me, one of the things that I felt personally at the pool and even in the ocean, riding both stock 5.5 five and 5.6, it just had a lot of hold. Yeah. It had a lot of drive. Um, I never felt like it was gonna slide out yeah. because I have the stabilizer and the fins I'm choosing. Right. Um, I wouldn't say it wasn't playful. It kind of felt like I was riding a thruster almost. Like it's given me that kind of performance in my turns right right um one of the things i noticed and i thought today in the um, beach breaks that we were surfing i felt like my 26.9 volume might have been a little bit too much but with the rail being a little bit tapered it actually felt great sometimes when you get a board with a lot like higher on the volume side for myself especially in uh, any kind of eps epoxy they're so topical it's hard to plant the rail and push off it and i didn't feel that at all so it felt good like i feel like if if i were to buy this as a daily driver and ride it 90 percent of the time living here in southern california or, or even in waco surf um i would choose this construction in tech over you know a, a pu poly in this particular board i i agree i tend to agree for sure yes um anytime you can get a little extra help especially in the waves a little, a little more yeah. gutless you know, SoCal tends to be that more often than not. Right. You know, take take every bit of help you can get, and I right. think the Hi-Fi really does a good job at doing that. Hey, it's Wooly from Wooly TV, and I'm stoked to be doing a collab with Surf and Show on the JS Black Baron 2.1. You. designed to run as a two plus one. It's super loose, super free, feels unreal and holds really well. We've got the 5.11, 34.2. So let's just go find some waves and get out there on this thing and we'll be back.
One thing I can confirm, this board is very, very fast. Waves were super quick and the board was keeping up and I was watching a lot of the other guys on standard thrusters and they were going nowhere near the sections or the speed that this one was. Speed of the 20 and the maneuverability, or free, it was freer than a thruster, less drag, but still had some hold. So yeah, super happy with it so far. Can't wait to try it on my forehand. Fin's got a hold of me. Oh no! All jokes aside, that was a hell of a lot of fun out there. I like this one a lot because I have run it as a two plus one. So it gives you that extra hold on the bottom turns and a couple of those turns you'll just see that there's no way I could have surfed like that on a normal wide tail 20. It's also got the bladey rails which really helps hold it in. Epic stuff. Stoked to be at Ace's house again, yeah. brother. Thanks for being on the yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. Look at your wife's decorating. Jen is amazing. She is. She is. Thanks, mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're on the JS Black Baron 2.1. It's been a while since we've ridden this. Why don't you tell us how it went and what it felt like underfoot? Yeah, it's been a little bit and uh, watched the clips a few times last couple of days over and over and over. And the board had really good um, carving, I felt like. I felt like on some of the turns, when I'd come out of the pocket and go onto the flats of the wave and push it back, you could push super hard mm -hmm. and get it to wrap back in and it would wrap back around pretty quick. Um, sometimes I think if I didn't have my feet set just right, you know, the pool, that's the wave is so kind of compact and if your uh, feet aren't right and you're not in the right positioning, it's hard to transition. So I had a couple waves where my feet Maybe we weren't placed right. It took a little yeah. bit to transition, but overall the board is fun. I'd like to try this board in a little bit more face maybe where mm -hmm. you could kind of just bring it around more and use the rail line more. Sure. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode on the JS Black Baron 2.1. Always stoked to have you on the yeah, show. No. And it was fun to get some waves in the beach break. You were yeah. ripping like always. And guys, whether you go FCS2, Futures, I feel like whatever Twin Plus trailer fin set you have, whether it's the Mick Fannings, the MRs, anything in the Futures lineup, I feel like the board lends itself to pretty much whatever Twin Plus trailer you already have, yeah. right? And then Twin Fins, I think in FCS2, you probably want to go with the Power Twins. The Power Twins, it's the bigger Twin Fin compared to these, right? with no stabilizer. And then you can, like you said, write it as a thruster, and just play with fins and have a good time. Yeah. 